We came as soon as we could. What's the problem? There must be some kind of mistake. We have no problem. You do now. Complete. Good. Come to sector A4. Wow. This way. we came from. All of it? Enough. Let's get out of here. This way. He doesn't. Uh, wait for my cue and I proceed as planned. The area is completely surrounded. I'm aware of that. Wait for my cue and I proceed as planned. I'll meet you on the fourth floor in five minutes. You come with me. Yes, we'll do.
meet you at the elevator. You can cut out early if you'd like. I need the overtime. Then that would be me. Oh, that's because I beat you last time. Come on now, play fair. High call? I'm gonna take you this time. Looks like you finally won one, Mike. <laughs> Not so fast. <laughs> I can see myself now sitting by the pool, sipping my margarita while you guys toil away here. <laughs> That's better than a two. That's it. I'm through betting. 
Come on, we gotta meet the envoy. Don't forget to fill out your report before you go. Okay. Hello, I'm, I'm Officer Henderson. This is Officer Jeffers. We're heading up to security here today. We just thought we'd introduce ourselves and go over the agenda. Well, I'm pleased to meet you. This is State Senator Cook. And this is his press secretary, Janine Simpson. I'm producing the campaign spot, Steve Johnson. I want to do a quick tour of the facility, shoot the senator's dialogue, and we're out of here. It's less than an hour, hopefully. Is that cool with you? Well, Officer Jeffers or one of my other men will be happy to answer any uh, specific questions you have. I have a question, Officer Jeffers. You're one of the last of 60 people here who were laid off since this facility was decommissioned. How do you feel about that? The senator is against the closing of the plant. I'm against the loss of jobs for hardworking people like Officer Jeffers here and, uh... Officer Henderson. Henderson, that's right. Well, Senator, most of the people who worked here were highly trained scientists and technicians who won't have any trouble finding new jobs. The rest of us had plenty of warnings, so I don't really see what the issue is. Ah, well, officer, I guess we'll just have to agree to disagree. All right. I've got no time for that kind of silliness. Sir, we should really get started. The morning light makes you look 10 years younger. You are, as always. Okay, one of you guys has tour duty. I want you out there in 15 minutes. I'll do it. Wait a minute, what are you volunteering for? You don't want to supervise that group any more than I do. Someone asked you. Yeah, but at least you can do is fight me for it. He feels bad for you, Mike. <laughs> Why? You always lose. Every time. No, I don't. Okay, all right, I do, but that's because you guys always use those stupid games of chance to make decisions. If you guys would use something meaningful for once, something deep, like trivia, ask me a sports trivia question, anything, and if I don't get it right, I will do the tour. Well, he does know a lot about sports. He's lost money on all of them. And don't give me an easy one. Make it hard. Who were the original hosts of Monday Night Football? <laughs> Howard Cosell. Daddy Don Meredith and Frank Gifford. Wrong. Gifford wasn't until the second year. Keith Jackson was the first year. Get out of here. He's right. Damn. Have fun, guys. Intelligence says security is pretty much at a minimum. We should be able to just walk in there. Gentlemen, prepare yourselves. Anderson. I'm here. Monitors are on the blink again, but I think I saw a few stragglers out by the front gate. I'm going to try and get them pointed in the right direction, but keep an eye out for them, all right? Will do. I had a feeling I'd be seeing you. Who are the original hosts of Monday Night Football? Howard Cosell, Don Meredith, and Keith Jackson. You said Frank Gifford, right? It's a trick question. I thought you were going to give up betting. I am, starting now. I'm glad to hear that. Well, you're all set here. I'll be back at the office if you need me. Okay. Keith Jackson. Hey, guys! 
You must be lost. Rest of your crew's on the other side of the compound. I'll show you if you go right. What the hell is this? I'm sorry. Intelligence said the place would be empty. Intelligence said, well, they were wrong. Now we've got a totally different situation to handle before we can move. The uh, entrance is clear, sir. We're all set to go. Good. We have to move now. So uh, what do we do? Get in the facility. You cut the telephone lines. And we shoot them all. Senator, when you're done powdering your nose, your crew is ready. I'm ready now. Tell me, Officer Jeffers, does one need a high school diploma to become a security guard? I don't know. But I did eight years in the Air Force and got myself a master's degree just to be safe. Hey there. Don't do anything. Are you two looking for the senator? Yes, but I'm afraid we got lost. The gentleman back at the gate must have given us the wrong direction. Well, I don't have either one of you on the list, so it's already gotten started. Do you mind filling me in? It's nothing special. Just some politician making a TV commercial for himself. Bunch of hooey, if you ask me. How big is the crew? Just a handful. Well, that's no problem at all. Where are they? They're up on the roof. Gotta go. Thanks. Take care of him. What about the criticism that closing this plant will eliminate 60 jobs? That's an excellent question. First of all, I'd like to remind you that I opposed the closing of this facility. Now, I served in Vietnam, and I know firsthand the importance of continuing programs that promote national security. However, in this case, most of the employees were highly skilled scientists and technicians who were very much in demand. So the threat to jobs is not really that much of concern. Any other questions? Well, I guess we can begin a tour of the facility. Officer Jeffers will lead us. Hmm? This way, folks.
Hey, what are you doing? Easy. Bored. Maybe you could uh, expand your tour, do a little juggling act, something like that. Well, I'm not a tour guide, Senator. I'm just here for your safety. I'd expect more than that from a man with a master's degree. What were your fields of study? Basket weaving, physical education. Well, in the Air Force, I got real good at peeling potatoes for eight years, but my degree is in political science. Speaking of which, what prompted you to want to become a state senator? Couldn't hack it on the federal level? I can hack it on any level, mister. I served in Vietnam. Yeah, I think you mentioned that about six times in your speech. Well, come on, people, let's go. Well, with all the workers gone, the jobs gone, place looks like a ghost town. As you can see, looks like they made good on their word and decommissioned this place. Used to be a thriving community. Well, folks, I think that's all there is to see. Why don't we start heading back? I think that's an excellent idea. I think we've got enough footage. Senator, we could still use a few close-ups. I think the people have seen quite enough. Besides, my best light's already gone by. <laughs> Get back to the plan as quickly as you can. Move now, go. like we got everyone, yeah. Good, so let's get down to business. Wait, there's someone missing. Where's the security guard? Where is he? I, I don't know. Brain, there is no time for this. The whole mission is in jeopardy. Which way did they move? That way. Good, you go back to the van and work on the device with Peterson. We have a job to finish. This way. Come on. Come on. Go. This way. They'll be coming right behind us. Calm down. There's over a couple of hundred rooms in this place. They won't know where to find us. I'm gonna make it even harder. Come on.
Phone's dead. We must have cut the lines. What are we gonna do? Keep your voice down. You got a cell phone? Bill, can you take a look at this right here and let me know? Borden here. Joe, it's Mike Jeffers out of San Miguel. Hey, Mike Jeffers. I hope you're calling to tell me you got my money. I'm calling you from a cell phone. Listen, we got an emergency out here. We're under attack by I don't know who. Attack? All right, let me guess, and you're the only survivor, right? Shut up. And listen to me. I don't have much time here. I'm hiding out in the plant. I need you to send help down here ASAP. Look, if this is some kind of joke, I don't... It's no joke. People are dead, Joe. All right, uh, all right, I'll, uh, I'll get a car over here. Uh, oh, hey, what's your number so I can call you back? What's the number on this phone? Um, it's, a uh, 555-0235. 555-0235. And be careful, I don't know how many of them are out there. All right. Pete, call the power plant and see if the phones are working. You got it. Hey, Bear, see if we got a patrol car in that area. Right. I have no time for this. I have to go back. Find any survivor and kill them. Then report back to me. We're here on site. I don't see anybody. Gate's open. We're proceeding into the facility. We've got a massacre at San Miguel. Get some backup down here as soon as possible. to go back up there. What do you mean? Why don't we just wait here till everything calms down? I don't think so. Call me crazy, but I'd kind of like to know what just happened up there. Maybe I'll come back with some good news. I'm going with you. That's not a good idea. No, you have a gun and I have a rule. Stay close to the guy with the gun. You can't leave me here. Then come with us. I'm not going back out there. Look, I'm just going to do a quick recon. I'll be back in less than 15 minutes. How are we doing? Right on schedule. How long until it's up? A couple of hours, at most. Good, very good. There has been a slight change. Have you placed the charges yet? That was Steele's job. Steele is dead. Now it's your job. Go. Accident entrance. No one can get out or in until I say so. One other thing. You better obey and follow my orders, or I put a bullet in your head. I don't care how smart you are. Is this clear? Yes, sir.
Department of Defense is being contacted, Sheriff. Okay. You want us to check out inside? No, we'll just sit tight for the time being. Yeah. See what Mike has to say. You were in the army, didn't you? Uh-uh. Air Force. I was head of security at the base. Nothing fancy. Oh, great. A lifetime security guard. Hey, from what I can see, my job's a hell of a lot better than yours. Don't rub it in. I always wanted to be a news reporter. You know, grab the big headline. Seemed like every major story slipped right through my fingers. Hell, I'm lucky I have this crappy job. Join the club. Vibrate? Sorry. Yeah. Mike, it's Joe. We got a blockade set up out here. What the holy hell is going on in that plant? It's bad, Joe. Charlie and Rick are dead. <sighs> Who else besides you and those sons of bitches are in that plant? State Senator Cook and his press secretary. I think everybody else is dead. I'm still trying to figure out what's going on in here. Looks like they're working on some kind of bomb. All right, look, Mike, find a safe place and wait this thing out. Yeah. How long ago did this call come in? About 10 minutes ago. Any word yet on who these people are? Jack should give us all the details. Well, let's just hope it's nothing. Thank God you're here. Bring us up to date. I got a call from the San Miguel Police Department. They're reporting that their nuclear plant has been assaulted by a possible terrorist group. Oh, Jesus. There's a possibility that this is related to the incident last night at Cyberdyne Systems. I got Sheriff Borden on line two. All right, put him through. Sheriff, it's Alan Gould. Two of my best men are dead. Who knows how many more inside? Look, we're just a small town department, so unless you want a lot more people dying, I suggest you get some of your expert government guys down here pronto. Yeah, we're working on it. Do you have any idea who these people are? Nope. There's a security guard on the inside that's in communication with me by cell phone. He says he thinks they're building some kind of bomb. So I guess we'll be hearing something pretty soon. But listen, they're serious about killing. The next guy they kill might just be your boy, Senator Cook. Shit, that's just what we need, a dead senator. Live ones are bad enough. All right, keep us up to date on everything that comes through, Sheriff. We've got government intelligence working on this as we speak. <laughs> government intelligence? Okay, guys, looks like it's up to us. Mike. Man, I hope you're on your first lucky streak. How do we spin this? We don't. Press is blacked out. 
Get me Washington on the line now. Jack, gonna need you to set up communications. Check out down there. See what's going on around the corner. To think, I almost voted for you. Wait, wait. I'm sure we can come to some sort of an agreement on this. Nah. How about I just kill you and save the taxpayers all that retirement loot you're going to collect? I'm a senator! He was gonna kill me. What's going on out there? Sorry, can't help you. I will shoot you. Talk. You know, Sheriff, I know you and Mike are friends and all, but I gotta tell you, this whole setup's just way too familiar for my liking. What are you driving at, Reed? Well, nobody ever wants to mention it, but a lot of guys are starting to talk about the Parsons thing. Well, yeah. I mean, Jeffers is in there alive. Everybody else is dead, including Charlie and hey, Rick. Hey, don't push me, Reed. <sighs> okay, you may have heard the stories, but do you know the real fact? Do you? No, but I'm listening. Well, everybody knows Mike Jeffers was sheriff down in Parsons County. He got involved in some kind of alcohol, tobacco, and firearms deal where they came in to bust a bunch of gun runners. Mike took four of his best men and five ATF agents. And, well, something went wrong, and they were all killed. Everybody except Mike Jeffers. A few thought he was a real hero. Most people thought he was a coward, and he ran and hid at the first sign of trouble. Either way, he was the sole survivor. <sighs> Bad publicity came down like flies on a cow patty. And the only job he could get is a security guard. And only that because of his military record. Where do you stand on all that? Well, <laughs> I give him a lot of grief about it. The fact of the matter is, if I thought he was a gutless coward, I wouldn't be sitting out here in the sun with your thumb up my butt, would I? No, sir, you would. <clears throat> Give me your tie. What? Your tie. Oh, for God's sake, give me this time. 
all right, all right, all right, all right, here. Thank you. Okay, come on. Mike, you got those bad guys yet so we can head on home? Got one. Got confirmation they're building some kind of bomb. I'm working on the others. All right, good work. Keep your head down. Yes, sir. I'll apprise the Secretary of Defense right away. Garfield! Give this to Secretary of Defense Ames. Okay. Now the big guns are coming out to play. Get me Borden on the line. We gotta move. I said I'm not going out there. Well, you can stay here if you want. But pretty soon, somebody's gonna notice this guy is missing and they're gonna come looking for him. So you can go with us or you can stay here and wait for them. He's right. I don't think I can do it. Now you listen to me. If you want to get yourself killed, you go right ahead. But you are not gonna put us in danger. You got that? Now move! Feisty. Very feisty. Well, you... you shut up and move, too. Yes, ma'am. And my guy inside says they're definitely building a bomb of some kind. How did he confirm that? Well, he didn't say that in ass, but he's not stupid. Speaking of which, how's the intelligence coming? Well, we've notified the Secretary of Defense. We're waiting on further instructions. In the meantime, I'm gonna find someone to send out there who's familiar with nuclear technology. Maybe they can help you guys out. Get on that. You better make it quick. What are you thinking? They'll have demands. Do you want me to call Washington? Not yet. This was supposed to be an administrative job. I also can't take this. Said. Good. Be very close. We are right on time. Which way? Let's go. We're setting ducks here. Go. 
whoever you are, I hope you got some answers. Yeah, it's Gould. I've had Cyberdyne send a man out to help you. He shouldn't be there any time now. Yeah, I think I see him coming. Okay, his name is Carl Wendt. He's a nuclear technician. He should be able to figure out what to do. Call us as soon as you know anything. All right. Hello. I'm Carl Wendt. You must be Sheriff Borden. Yes, I am. I, uh, I don't know a lot, but I'll fill you in on what I do know. Oh, it's all right. I've already been briefed. So why are they here? Well, the hypothesis is that this siege is related to the Cyberdyne incident last night. Now, if that's true, there could be a very big problem. Well, I gathered that much. Small amount of fissionable material was taken from our lab. Enough to make a small bomb. Now, if that bomb were detonated here, there's enough crude atomic material already in this plant to produce another Chernobyl. Let's hope I'm wrong about that, though, huh? It's just a flesh room. You'll be fine. I told you, we never should have left and gone out there. You almost got us killed. Listen, I don't mind you pissing me off, but now you're starting to bore me, so shut up. Gentlemen, please. Now what are we going to do? I'm thinking. Samson, I'm only 10 minutes away. All I have to do now is blacken the wires with this. You won't be able to tell a colored wire from a black one. Excellent. Rand and Tennant haven't come back yet. Go and find them. I'm going to make that phone call. Are you sure you're 10 minutes away? I'm positive. It's gonna look bad if a nuclear disaster erupts with only the local police out there. After the wake-up incident, we cannot afford another bad judgment call. I know, but we're on hold until the Attorney General gives the Secretary of Defense the go-ahead. Guys, there's a call. I think this is it. This is Alan Gould here. Who am I speaking with? Samson here. I'm going to get to the point. I have control of the San Miguel nuclear facility. I have a list of demands. The United States does not negotiate with terrorists, Mr. Sampson. These are demands, not requests. We have constructed a bomb. It's not a very large one, but it's very effective. And believe me, it's very well positioned. And how do I know you're telling the truth? This bomb has been constructed by my associate, Arthur Bream. I'm sure you have a file on him. I'm going to fax your list of prisoners in federal custody throughout the nation. You have five hours to arrange their unconditional release. In addition, we need a Learjet, fully fueled with $50 million cash on board and a helicopter transportation from here. I think we both know that those demands will never be met, sir. I think they will. We are men with a purpose, Mr. Gould. All of us will happily die for this cause. And if anyone tries to disturb my mission, I will detonate this bomb early. You now have four hours left. Goodbye, Mr. Gould. Okay, Jack. Get me Washington on the line. Samson, you never said anything to me about $50 million. Money makes the world go around. This is a political cause. It's not a financial one. Political causes need money. Everybody knows that. It will work. Because what we are doing is right. Trust me. Rand! Tannen! Where the hell are you guys? Rand! Tannen! Son of a bitch! Call it. Heads. Wow, you weren't kidding. So far, you've gotten everyone wrong. I told you. When it comes to making any kind of decision, like earlier, left or right, I'm always wrong. 
Even when I try to outsmart myself by picking left because I'm thinking right, it doesn't work either. That's comforting. What can I say? I'm a lousy gambler. Okay, so now what? I'm gonna look for a way out. Maybe the answer is to establish a dialogue. If I could just talk to whoever's leading them, I'm sure I could negotiate our release. Or get yourself killed. Yeah, they really didn't seem like the talkative type. Uh, no, no, no. You have to know how to speak to them diplomatically. That's a good idea. You go ahead. Go establish a dialogue. We'll be waiting when you get back. I thought so. happened to you? I don't know who it was. One of them was a security guard. A security guard? Shut up. Just untie me. is running out. If we're gonna go, we might as well do it now. Come on. What are we doing? This looks dangerous. We want to get out of here. Of course. There's one exit they may not know about. This leads to it. back with help. We gotta move. Here's the files you requested, Secretary. Thank you. Sir? Yeah. What do you have? I've got reports on all the prisoners asked to be released, as well as a profile on Arthur Bream and Samson himself. Take a look. Mm. Samson is a code name for a man named Rudolf Fassbender. He's a European arms dealer whose base is unknown at this time. He's been supplying arms to the militia movement in this country for quite some time, we believe. 
Subversive well, It looks like our man Samson has some very strong views on uh, personal freedom. He's hardcore. I believe he quotes the book of Revelations. His group has been promising to pull off something big for quite some time. We believe this may be it. What about Bream? Bream, he's an egghead inventor, nuclear engineer, an authority on nuclear science. He did extensive work for us until he dropped out of circulation about three years ago. What the hell is he doing with these guys? Radical gone off the deep end? Christ, this is absurd. This looks like a who's who list of every American terrorist act for the last 15 years. I just want to know one thing. Is Arthur Bream capable of, of arming a nuclear weapon? Based on what intelligence has gathered, it appears so. Thank you. Secretary of Defense has been apprised of the situation. He's conferring with the Attorney General and the President. Are they going to release any prisoners? No. They're not going to meet any demands. They're just going to wait him out. My God, this is crazy. The U.S. government is calling their bluff. Check in. Go over to the corner and keep a look at it. Go over to the corner and keep a look at it. What's the matter with you? I thought you served in Vietnam. I did! I was in supply. Boyden. Yeah, Joe, hey, it's Mike. What's going on out there? Well, government's in an uh, bomb expert. And apparently some demands have been made. We just out here hanging on our peckers. Are they going to send anybody in? That's Washington's call, but I wouldn't count on it. If I was you, I'd get my butt out of there ASAP. Well, I'd love to, but you need somebody inside. Besides, I think my luck is changing. How's that? Well, I'm still alive. Yeah. Well, stay, stay that way. way. Don't press your bet. Thanks. Listen, there's a way out of here. Down there is a gate, okay? Get through it. You turn right, you're gonna be running right into the sheriff. Wait a minute, aren't you coming? I can't. Not till this is over. Well, what are you waiting for? Well, you can't stay here. They'll kill you. No, they won't. If things get rough, I'll be right behind you. Come on, Janine. Let's go. Go. Go on. Listen, um, this is the biggest news story in the world right now, and I am smack dab in the middle of it. So when this is over, I would really like an exclusive interview with you. Are you changing careers? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Suit yourself. <laughs> Sounds like our problem is solved. Oh my god. Oh my god. Come on. Come on. Oh, come, on. Come, on. come on, stop it. He's dead. They had to hear that. Come on, let's go. Let's go. That's a small one, that's a small one. That's not the big one, so. The yeah, guy says it's just a small one. It's a small one, it's not the big one. But it's blowing up here. I mean, when are you gonna get these people? 
government experts up here. How many more people got to die before you act like you care about what's happening to these people here? You're all we have out there for the time being, so you just hang in there and wait for further instructions. Hello? It's him. Samson, it's Alan Gould. Good afternoon. We just killed your senator. Any word yet on our demands before we blow this place and the surrounding area sky high? Well, as you could probably guess, Washington had some difficulty with your demands. Now, if you're willing to negotiate, perhaps. Let we can me come up make this clear to you. I will happily die today. I'm prepared for that. So are my men. Washington is aware of that fact. I want to alert you. I'm setting the detonator right now. You now have 90 minutes. I'll expect confirmation that our demands have been met within a time. Or I will allow the bomb to detonate. And the result will be devastating. You hear me? Devastating. Goodbye. I better update Washington. Do you know where you're going? Up. Oh, I feel much better now. We had to please. Thanks. You're welcome. This whole thing would be over. Don't let me stop you. Tom's right behind him. With my luck, I'd hit that first. Okay, give him a minute. He's bound to move. Let's find a better angle. dead. It's one of those people that got away when we took out the camera crew. You're telling me a cameraman took out two of our best men? It's not one of them, it's that security guard. Security guard? This is your mess, Brim. You didn't follow the order. That's the result. Go with him. Go with them. Your job is done. I think I can take him from here. Think? Well, he keeps moving around a lot. We want to make sure all these numbers are checked and secured before anyone uses them. Put me through to Samson. I'd like to see if I can talk to him one last time.
Mr. Gould, I presume. Yes, that's right. I hope you're calling with good news. No, I'm afraid not. Listen, I'm sure that you believe very strongly in this mission, but... Well, I've got to be honest with you. The U.S. government is not going to meet your demands, ever. <laughs> that's fine. As I told you, we're here to make a statement. And apparently, it will be a big one. But what is that going to prove? How is that going to help your cause? If you want a soapbox to stand on, I'll get you one. I'll put you on national television. People do not have to die. When thousands, maybe millions of people die, the world will wake up. That's what it takes. We both know that. This government no longer exists to represent the people. That's why it has to be dismantled. Samson, they are going to think of you as a nut, a lunatic that engineered a disaster. Every great prophet was thought insane in his time. By the way, any wrong move by your sheriff out here, I will detonate the bomb even earlier. Take my word. All right. I'll call Washington again. But I don't think it's going to do any good. Nope. We're doing all we can. If this guy is telling the truth, we're looking at the worst disaster ever on United States soil. Do you think he's for real? Oh, yes, I do. And for all of our sakes, let's just hope Washington does too. Get him now. You have the shot. You want to do it? Not really. Thank you. Freeze! Drop the gun. Turn around. Finally. You probably have no idea how much trouble you've caused. What, I guess you're his faithful little sidekick? I could have killed you earlier, but I didn't. Yeah, well, big mistake. Unfinished business always has a way of coming back and biting you in the ass. Tannen, come on. Why can't we just tie him up? I mean, they'll be out of the way. There's no reason for unnecessary bloodshed here. Shut up and no, stand no, back. No, just hold on. No, look, oh. you're free. No. No. Put the gun down. Don't move! I swear I'll shoot. No, you won't. You don't want to kill us, and we don't want to kill you. So let's just work this out calmly, and we can all stay alive. Not another step. Give me the gun. Come on. Thank you. Why don't I hold that? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. President. We'll take care of it right away. The evacuation proceedings will begin immediately. Yes, sir. We cannot let these terrorist bastards take over. Yes, sir. Don't worry. We've got it under control. Yes. We'll call you as soon as we have an update. Take care of this right away. What's the decision? They've spoken to their experts. They've even conferred with Carl Wendt from the site. They don't believe there's imminent danger of a serious blast. They want to evacuate the area and wait them out. Yeah. Sheriff, I just got the final word from Washington. You're to pull everybody out of there immediately. 
They're already evacuating the local perimeter within the bomb's radius. You just get your people out of there. Oh, yes, sir, but what about Mike? He's still inside. Well, let's just hope he's taking good care of himself. You have your orders. All right, Washington says we gotta move out, so get ready. But nobody go anywhere till I say so. I'm still in charge here. This is insane. It's suicide. He'll detonate the bomb. He's that crazy. Take it up with the president. Look, the demands are ludicrous. He won't negotiate. I think he wants to blow this bomb. Let's just pray they get everybody out of there in time. I guess you're the man we've all been hearing about. Drop the gunner, he's dead. You really are a security guard. I must say, I'm impressed. And you, you are a real big disappointment. Drop it. Bream, you're fired. <laughs>
Where'd you learn to shoot like that? Well, no, that was my first time. Pretty good, huh? Not bad. Yeah, Joe, it's Mike. It's clear. You can come on in now. Mike, are you sure? Hell yes. The bad guys are dead. But we're gonna need somebody in here who can disarm the device. Okay, okay, we're on our way in. All right, we're going in! But listen, I want everybody to be mindful of every exit in history. This whole place is liable to be booby-trapped. Carl, get your ass up here ASAP. Come on, man. It's time for you to shine. We got a bomb for you to defuse. Listen, we need to evacuate the area as soon as possible. You can't disarm it? Well, maybe, maybe, maybe not. It's gonna be close, though. Now, I have managed to freeze two of the connections. That'll contain the blast to a point. But if I can't stop it in time, there could still be a fallout radius of uh, several miles. Well, hopefully you'll disarm it by then. Otherwise, it won't much matter to any of us, will it? Look, we need to get the bomb away from here. We gotta get it to a more deserted area. Listen, there's a deep ravine about 10 miles north of here. If we could get it there, would that contain the blast? If we get it there in time, yeah. Look, I, I, I need to stay with the bomb and keep working on it. I need to get some transportation out of here, though. I'm going with you. Okay. Okay. Hell, we might as well give it a try. I'll need a vehicle and an escort. We're gonna duck this thing. Everybody else, out of here. I want you to go with them. Are you kidding? If I break this story, I'll write my own ticket. If I see it through to the finish, I'll win a Pulitzer Prize. Now, let's go. Sheriff, tell me what's going on out there. The bomb is being transported right now to San Clemente Ravine. We're gonna drop it in the deepest part. Christ, that's suicide. Well, Carl Wentz on board trying to defuse the bomb. He shut down part of it, but, well, just in case he can't finish the job, this will at least contain the explosion. Good luck. get this thing confused and we have to dump it. You realize we're going to be at ground zero. I know that. Wait, don't wet yourself yet, huh? I'm going to get it diffused. I'm almost there. Anything we can do? Yeah, you can stop staring at me, huh? Oh my god, what is that?
best circumstances. This is an atomic fucking bomb for Christ's sake. Oh. God, you're okay. Looks like you saved a day. Well, you're the one who picked the right wire. Well, I guess it's the first time for everything. Maybe your luck is changing. Yours too. That's right. I have an exclusive. Uh, 
Oh. Oh. Oh, oh. sorry. I just want to shake your hand, mister. What you did took balls of steel. <laughs> I under understand they couldn't have done without you either, old lady. Oh, well, I... Well, I did shoot one of the bad guys, and, uh, I disarmed the bomb. It was a hell of a way to spend my last day on the job. <laughs> yeah, well, I tell you what. I'm gonna let you off of that debt you owe me, just my way of saying thanks. Hey, Mike, it's Mr. Gould from Department of Defense. He's been wanting to talk to you. Yeah. Mike, that was great work. I don't know how you did it or how we can ever repay you. Well, I'm looking for a new job. Now, what kind of work are you looking for? Oh, something cushy. Yeah, I know what you mean. But I'm sure we can arrange something. Thank you. Get me, uh... Cold turkey for me. Get me the president. I got some news that's gonna make his day. Hey, Mike, I got something for you. What's this? 300 bucks. Some of the guys had a bet going you wouldn't make it. Some of the guys? Okay, all of the guys. Except for me. I figure it's yours. You earned it. You know, I'd tell you what to do with this, but then I wouldn't want it back. <laughs> Boy, I could use a drink. Who's buying? Why, you are, of course. Why me? Because you just won $300. Yeah, but I'm unemployed now. All right, I'll flip you for it. No. Nope. Double or nothing. No, no means no. Double or nothing, I'll buy, and I'll give you a full body massage. Let me see the coin. 